Greeting to you, my brothers and sisters, and welcome to English service at New Life Fellowship. I hope that you and your family are doing well. This COVID-19 is difficult, but now we can see that COVID-19 is fading and your faith is getting stronger and stronger. I have heard from Pastor Samari, told me that you are growing a lot in the Lord. Your faith is getting stronger and stronger, and your generous generosity is show the world that you are the one that represents God on this earth and the community around you. I am proud of you. And the pastors and leaders at New Life Fellowship, really proud of you. This week, I have the privilege to share with you again in this service. And the sermon, the topic of my sermon is Journey to Life's Freedom. I need freedom. You need freedom. All people around the world need freedom. We need whether we need freedom from financial debt, we whether need freedom from the conflict relationship that doesn't work well. We need freedom from poverty. We need freedom from diseases and sicknesses. We need freedom from many things. In the book of Exodus, showed us that ancient times, thousands of years ago, Israelites was living in Egypt for 400 years, a slave. Them and their descendant and all the children and grandchildren and great 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 grandchildren born to be slaves in Egypt. Like to be slaves is not good. They cry out to God and God sends someone on behalf of him to go and deliver these people to a better place. I'm going to read to us from the book of Exodus, chapter 6, verse 2 to 7. You will learn a lot from these scriptures. I'm going to read from New Living Translation. And God said to Moses, you see, God, start with God, say to Moses, he found Moses as his helper. He said, I am Yahweh, the Lord. He tells Moses that he is the Lord. And verse 3, I appear to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob as El Shaddai, God Almighty. He appears himself to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob as El Shaddai, as God Almighty. But I did not reveal my name Yahweh to them. Verse 4, And I reaffirmed my covenant with them. Under its terms, I promised to give them the land of Canaan. He promised he would give them a better place called the land of Canaan where they were living as foreigners, you can be sure that I have heard the groans of the people of Israel who are now slaves to Egyptians. And I am well aware of my covenant with them. He well aware of his covenant with them. Therefore, say to the people of Israel, he told Moses to do that, I am the Lord. 
I will free you from your oppression and will rescue you from your slavery in Egypt. I will redeem you with the powerful arm and great acts of judgment. Verse 7, I will claim you as my own people and I will be your God, then you will be, will know that I am the Lord, your God, who has freed you from your oppression in Egypt. This is the promise of the Lord God for the Israelites that live in Egypt. Can you imagine? Slaves for 400 years. No freedoms at all. But God saw that. God wanted to help them. They take them out of slavery and take them to a better place and made a great nation out of them. Point number one, God made a promise with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. God is the God of promise. He made a promise and he kept his promise and people get to experience his promise. See, he's promised with Abraham. He take Abraham out of his village, out of his people to the land that he showed Abraham later. See, this is a, this journey with God. Sometimes it's it's difficult. Why? We as human, we want to know where we are going. The place that we go is it a better place or not? I guarantee you, the place that God is taking us to, it's a better place than the place where that we are living right now. See, Abraham hear God calling, and he has faith, and Abraham obey. In Hebrew chapter three, verse fifteen, I'm going to read from ESV, as it is said, today, if you hear His voice. If you hear God's voice, if I hear God's voice, do not harden your hearts as the rebellions. If you hear God's voice, you obey him. You listen and put it in your heart and obey God's voice right away. Don't allow any doubt to get into your heart and produce the fruit there, no. But allow faith to grow in your heart. Allow that seed to grow and grow into more faith. Abraham, at that time, he has no children. But God made a promise with him that he will have children. No children. And later on, he have a lot of wealth. Later on, for 25 years, Abraham has his first child. His name is Isaac. So Abraham received the seed, which is the word of God. He allowed that word to grow and he get to have the fruit, which is Isaac's. His son is the fruit of Abraham's faith. This fruit Give more fruit, which is, he get another fruit with Esau and Jacob. As you know, Jacob has so many children, have 12 sons. It's keep multiplying, 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 and they have more children, and they have more wealth, and they become so rich. If Abraham were to live at where he was, maybe it's not that 
not that great. But because Abraham was willing to obey God. And you see that God multiplied a lot. In Hebrew, chapter 11, verse 8 to 9, I'm reading from the message. By an act of faith, Abraham said yes to God's call to travel to an unknown place that would become his home. Unknown place would become his home. When he left, he had no idea where he was going by an act of faith. He lived in the country he's promised him. Live as a stranger camping in tents. Isaac and Jacob did the same. Living under the same promise. Abraham received the promise of God. And he kept that promise. The seed grows in his heart and produces fruit. And he received a son by the name of Isaac. And Isaac also received the promise of the Lord. And he go get a wife from another country, which is his relatives. By faith, he do that get married and get children and his children have a lot of wealth. God made a promise. God made a promise to you. God made a promise to me. I believe that you got promises from the Lord. A lot of promises from his word, from the Bible. Important for us to know the promises of God. Number two, God made a promise. God said, Moses, Moses, you see, I made a promise with Abraham and I kept that promise and I delivered that promise and they received that promise. And now I made a promise with you. This is what God said to Moses. Exodus chapter six, verse four. I also established, God said, my covenant with them is Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to give them the land of Canaan, the land which they live as sojourners, as foreigners, foreigners. When you go live in a foreign country, sometimes it's difficult. You don't know the culture, you don't have friends, you don't have relatives and everything like that. It's difficult. But God made it possible. God made it easier for Abraham, easier for Isaac, easier for Jacob. You see? And uh, the same chapter, verse 6. Say therefore to the people of Israel, tell Israelite people that live in Egypt, I am the Lord. I will bring you out from under the burden of Egyptian. I will take you out of the burden of slavery and I will deliver you from slavery to them. And I will redeem you with an uh, outstretched arm and with great act of judgment. This is God. God said, I take you out. I will take these people out. Moses, go tell them. You know the story, my brothers and sisters. And God, take these Israelites out of Egypt. Go to the promised land. The land of milk and honey. The land that they benefit a lot from that land. That land produce a lot of fruit for the Israelite. But to go to the promised land is not that easy either. Face a lot of things along the way. Some of them, some of the older people, the older generation, 
they don't have faith. They die. And they die in the wilderness. They did not taste. They didn't get to taste the promised land. They didn't get to see their joys. They didn't get to see the, the freedom at the promised land. This is important for you and I. That we need to believe in the word of God. And allow that word to grow in us. God also made a promise with you and I. He made a promise with you and I. Exodus chapter 6 verse 7. I will take, I will take you to be my people. He said, I will take you to be my people. And I will be your God. You are my people. And I will be your God. This is the word of God. He said that you are his people. You are his sons. You are his daughters. And he is your God. For God is God. For God is so good. For God, he made a promise with you and I. And he kept that promise. And who has brought you out from under the burden of Egyptian? My brothers and sisters, He will, God will, deliver you and I out of this pandemic. This pandemic, it's freaked the world out. It's freaked out all of us. It causes so many destruction and kill hundreds and thousands of lives. It's so sad. But you and I continue to stand strong in this word of God that we will, we will not allow this pandemic. We will not allow this Pandemic destruction will destroy you and I, but we will stand strong in the faith of God. And He, the Almighty God, will deliver you and I from our afflictions. This is the word of God for us today. Stand strong. What are the promises of God? For you, for your ch children, for your family, and your descendants to come. I believe that God has that promises for you and I. Believe in that promise and claim that promises that you will receive it one day. And as for today, we get to see that we receive it by bit bit by bit. All the things that I shared above, it's required you and I to make a great decision, which is the decision that build on faith, build on the Word of God. God is a God that has all power and authority. God is the God that can help you and I with everything and anything that we need in this life. From next week on, I will continue to share with you about faith, to build a strong faith. Once you have a strong faith, your life will not be afraid of anything. They're trying to harm you, trying to hurt you. But instead, you will get stronger and stronger and stronger than before. Can I pray for you? My Heavenly Father, Lord God, thank you so much for your faithfulness and for your love, your loving kindness for us. Lord God, that we are 
alive. We are protected. Lord God, you will provide all of our need, Father, Lord God. Lord God, thank you, Lord God, that your hand is upon us. That you said you will not leave us nor forsaken us, Lord God. Lord God, we receive this word in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you so much, my brothers and sisters. And God bless you and your family. Tell us, share with us in the comment that, um, you know, you received something. Share with us uh, your testimony of God's goodness so that other people will have faith in God as well. God bless you. See you next week. Amen.